Okay, so let's get started with part two. So in the last video, we had just set up the very basics for the character. We've got an actual character in there. And we now need to go and set up some code and also sort out the camera so that we can rotate around and so that we're facing the direction we want to be in, all that kind of stuff. So first things first, we need to go into the content folder and then into the third person blueprints folder and then into the blueprints and then open up the third person character. And in here, we're going to find all the code we need to get our player moving. So we're going to grab this movement input code and the mouse input and the jump. So just mouse select over, control uh, C, and then come over to player B uh, blueprint, and then V, put that in, and then grab this big chunk of movement input code. So control C, come over, control V, and there it is. Right. So that's our movement code. Um, so let's compile that, hit play, and we have rotation for the camera. And we can move uh, in all the directions, which is perfect. But we need to be able to rotate the camera around the character. So let's go set that up. So uh, open up. Oops, not the third person character. We can close that down now. We'll be doing that for a second. Uh, now let's open up the viewport. And the first thing we're going to need to do is on the spring arm. So. Um, you should it should be set up like this but it might be different but what we need to do is we need to turn on this use pawn control rotation okay but what we want to do is switch it off uh here where we're going to use controller rotation your for the capsule so let's turn that off there and hit compile and then we should be able to move around and um and rotate the camera, which we can. But there's a problem. We're not facing in the direction that we're moving in, which you know we'll fix now. So click on the camera, the player, to open the player up, and then go to the character movement component. And then we want to, I just type in orient, uh, or just O-R-I, and then we get orient rotation to movement. Tick that and hit compile. And then with any look, now when we move, we rotate to the way that we're looking. Okay, which will do for us for now. Obviously, it's not looking great because there's no animation playing. So we'll uh, we're going to do that in this uh, in this video. So let's go to the content folder, then to player, then in the animations folder, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to come to this animations down here, and I want a blend space 1D, uh, and then it's for the player skeleton. Then I'm going to rename that, uh, if it lets me, uh, player underscore, player underscore BS. Open that up. And this is where we're going to create our uh, blend space going between an idle animation and a uh, walk and then a run now if you've never done a blend space before this is the version where we don't take the direction into account so we're only going to be looking for the speed here uh, when we go and write the blueprint and that's going to determine uh, what animation we play so if we come up here to the horizontal axis this is going to set this graph up for us so we're going to come here and type in speed now the minimum is going to be zero. The maximum is going to be 600. We might come and add a sprint later, so we might add some onto that. Um, and we're going to set the number of grid divisions, leave it at four. I think that should be fine. And for this interpolation time, I'm going to set that to be 0 0.2. If you find that your animation is really janky, you might want to up that a little bit, uh, the blends between the animations anyway. Now we've already imported our animation assets and they will all be listed here. If you can't see this asset browser, it will be in the Windows tab up here. You'll be able to get it. Um, so we want to start off with the idle animation. So let's find the sword and shield idle, which is this one. Make sure it isn't the block, because we're not doing that just yet. We'll run that from a different blend space. Um, 
probably. Um, and then we want uh, the walk animation next. So let's grab that, place that about on 300. So look, we'll blend between that. Okay. Uh, we might actually want to... I'm going to put in six grid divisions, actually. That's going to give me a few more divisions to play with. Uh, and then I'm going to pull that on to 200. That's better. And then I want the run to be at 600. In fact, just before we hit top speed, we want to be running. So there we go. And that's going to be our blend between our idle, <coughs> our walk, and then our run state. Now we need to remember these numbers. So our walk, uh, yeah, our walk is at 200, and our run starts at 500. So we've got a, we can put a sprint here at 600 if we need to, and we can up that value as well just by changing this here. All right. So blend spaces are fun. Uh, later on, we'll do blend spaces that take in direction into account. Um, and they're even more fun to play around with. Okay, so we'll uh, save that, but leave it open just in case we need to come back. And then we'll come back to our animation folder and then create an animation blueprint. So come to animation, and then we want an animation blueprint. Where is it? Why can't I see it? Is it? Is that in the way? Animation, oh, it's just there. Animation blueprint. <laughs> play a skeleton again, hit okay. And we want this to be called player underscore anim underscore bp. Right, double click to open that. Okay, so if this is the first time you've used these, these can seem incredibly intimidating and confusing, but actually they're uh, really fun to use and they are complicated, but they're not. If we just take a step at a time, we should understand what we're doing. Right, so this out pose, this is what's going to give us the result that plays the animation, all right? So we're going to right click and we're going to add new state machine and we're going to click on that and we're going to call it locomotion. Or you can call it movement if you want. I just like the word locomotion. Um, and I'm going to plug that into there, and then we're going to double click on this. Now, if you ever lose yourself in this, because it can be a bit of a nightmare to navigate around, what we have here, we have a graph that we're going to create here, which is going to be the, you know, uh, it's going to be rely on Boolean. Say, if this thing happens, then play this animation. We're going to set this up here. It'll make more sense when we get started. And we also have an event graph, which is just like any other event graph that you use, where we can, you know, call variables and check variables and all that kind of stuff and the, this event graph will link into this and it'll make sense as we get going so drag out from entry and let go and then add state and call this state idle forward slash walk forward slash run okay because we're going to deal with all of that here now i spelled that wrong that's going to drive me mad so i'll just change that quickly All right, and then double click to open that up and then drag in your player blend space that we just created. And then you'll see we need to a variable here. So we're going to drag out from that. We're going to promote that to a variable and we're going to call that speed. All right, now what we need to do is we need to go and define this variable and figure out what it's going to be. So we'll do that in the event graph. So here um, we've got this event blueprint update animation which is just like your event begin play essentially but it's going to update the animation all the time it's going to update this uh, this locomotion graph all the time okay so we're going to drag out and cast to player oh, to player bp and we're going to drag this object into this try get porn owner and then as the player BP, we want to get the velocity. That's going to give us our speed. And we're also going to get the forward vector. All right. Um, and then we're going to drag out this return value. And we're going to type dot to get a dot product. That's going to combine these two. And that is what we're going to set our speed to be. Okay. So we'll drag that out. So we're always checking the forward velocity, right? That we we are we are getting, and because we're always traveling forward, that should be fine. 
if we had a lock-on mechanic, we would have to uh, have backwards walking and stuff like that. But we're going to omit quite a lot of mechanics for this. We're going to just set up a very basic combat system. Let's just check how much time we've got left. Five minutes. We can get through this in five minutes. So that's going to set our speed variable. And the speed variable uh, is set up in here in this blend space. If we click on it, we've we've set this now in our event graph. And uh, if I hit compile, you'll see that she pops into the idle pose because right now she is just at zero speed. But if we go into the Anim preview editor, now all the variables will be available here for you to uh, play around with. So if I put in, remember, it, what was it, 200, then she'll be at a full speed walk. If I put in 500, she'll be at a full speed run. And if I put in 350, she'll be in a transition between those two. All right, so that's working. <clears throat> so now let's go back to the player BP. So keep these tabs open while you're working. But once you've worked on something, close them down or else you'll have about 30 open, and that's no fun. Um, so what we need to do now is click on the mesh, get rid of any uh, text you've put up here in the details panel, and then go to the anim class and select the uh, the animation blueprint that we just created and there we go we uh, have the player set up for animation if we hit play the animations play now you'll see <clears throat> that we don't really get any transition or a tiny tiny bit because we were on um, keyboard and it's not taking any sort of access value into account um, if this was on controller it would it still uh, wouldn't be great um, we need to set up a, a run and a walk state, um, define it with uh, the uh, movement or the max walk speed. <clears throat> but that's something we'll do later. So there we go. Set up with basic uh, animation. She'll walk, she'll jump. But the jump is bad. Uh, we need to go and set up a three-stage jump. Uh, in fact, we'll probably do a two-stage jump. We'll have a fall in animation and a land in animation. Uh, but that's something for the next video, probably. Now, I think we've got a bit of time left. Yeah, we've got enough time here to show you something. So I, if you go to a website called the Model Resource, now this is great because it has actual game assets that people have ripped from games. <clears throat> now, a lot of them just can't be used, but a lot of them can be used in conjunction with Mixamo, so a lot of these characters you could take into Mixamo, get them rigged in Mixamo, and then, because uh, Mixamo has an auto rigger built into it, and then um, use Mixamo animations. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to grab a sword. So um, I'm going to search him for a sword, and then you're going to get <clears throat> hundreds of swords, all from real games. Now, like I say, a lot of these won't work because they won't be the right file type, or um, they'll come in a really weird format. Um, but I know a few that do definitely work. So if I type in Senua Sword, which is a sword from Hellblade, I believe, a game called Hellblade. Search for that, <coughs> and there we go. We get it comes up. Um, and then I'm just going to download that. I'm going to place that onto my desktop. real quick and I'm just going to extract the files and that's going to extract to my desktop hopefully quickly get rid of that yeah okay so now we'll go into content create in fact we'll do this inside the player and we'll create a new folder and we'll call it weapons we might have more than one weapon but I was thinking we just have one uh, weapons and some magic we want some magic and then let's drag in <clears throat> This, we just want the uh, OBJ. Just drag that in, and I believe the materials will come in with it. Import all. And there we go, we've got a sword. Okay, so now we're going to use this sword to put in her hand, okay? So the first thing we need to do is go to our player folder, go to our mesh folder, and then go to the player skeleton. Now, I want you to right-click on her hand, <clears throat> come over here to the skeleton tree, 
if you can't get the hand for whatever reason, you want the right hand, unless you want to make her a left A, but the right hand, the animations are for the right hand. You can mirror them in uh, Mixamo, though, if you want to make a left-hander. <clears throat> okay. So uh, right hand, and then um, right-click, and then we want uh, add socket. And we're going to, and then the socket will appear down here. It won't be attached there. It'll come down to this list, bottom of this list. Click on it once, and then you can change the name. And I'm going to call it weapon location. Right. And then right click on uh, weapon location, and then go to add preview mess uh, asset. And then if you just search for the sword, and it'll add the sword. Um, but it isn't in the correct location. So what you've got to do is you've got to just move it into the correct location. So it can be difficult when it's in this T-Po. So if you go over here to where it says animation and where it says preview controller, go to uh, this drop-down menu, use specific animation, and then <clears throat> you can choose an animation. And I'm just going to choose the idle animation. Nope, that's the wrong one. In fact, it doesn't matter. They're all it'll all have the same. And then you can hit pause down here, so there is no movement because that that's a nightmare to deal with. And then just place the sword. Now your asset might not be scaled properly. You might have to scale it down and all sorts, but it will remember the scale of the object and everything when we add it back in a minute. So it's always good to do this. Um, turn the sword so it looks right in a hand. That's not in the hand, is it? Um, okay, that'll do for now. We can come back and finesse that if we need to. Right, so go to the player BP. Once we've you've set that up, you can hit save. Um, then we want to add that, okay? So click on the mesh so that we're going to inherit things to it. Add component and type scene, right? Call that scene component weapon location. Right. And then um, the parent socket over here, we want to click on the magnifying glass. If you can't see any of these options, it's because your weapon location is not parented to the mesh. And then we want to select weapon location, and then you'll see our scene pops to that location. And then with weapon location uh, selected, Add another component and make this a static mesh. Call this sword. And then add the static mesh. Oh, no, call it sword. There you go. Sword in the hand. And hit compile. And let's just give that a quick test. Okay, so when we run around, the sword is attached to our hand. And we probably should have put the sword on a better angle. It's not perfect. We'll fix that later. Okay, that's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one.